Hi, six months ago I presented this, the Vexhill West Ballast Vacuum, and it's been a wonderful little gadget and a great time saver. Well, loads of you gave really positive, supportive comments to the kind of the product, and have also sent me loads of emails asking how you could get hold of one. Well, sadly, production's been problematic, but I've got a solution, and here it is. So regular viewers will have seen this being used in previous videos of mine and it really is a great time saver. It does the job very, very well. Now if you're new to the channel and you've not seen this before and you think, what on earth is this all about? Rather than me waffle on and explain it all again, I'll leave a card up in the top corner of the screen and it would be worth you clicking on that and watching that previous video through and that will set the context for what's about to follow. So the previous product was made of two 3D printed components and in many ways, 3D printing is the ideal technology for manufacturing those things. In fact, the vacuum head itself, if that was to be injection molded, which would be the kind of the, the wise route to go down in terms of manufacturing and sort of production in mass, that'd have to be a two piece molding and sort of clipped together in some way. 3D printing allowed it all to be done in one piece. That's great. But there's the production dilemma. The print time's just so long and it uses so much resin that it just would not be financially viable for me to entertain the idea of printing those for all the people who had expressed an interest in buying one. So I put my thinking cap on and I thought, what's the alternative? Is there a solution I could come up with that could offer the same function as the previous product you've seen, um, but maybe offer some additional utility too? And so I've been working on that in the, sort of the background over the last few months and today I'm going to present this, which I think is the kind of the distilled version of what you've seen before. I've come up with an alternative for the vacuum cyclone separator, which will be multi-purpose, so it's not just limited to this particular gadget. Anyway, in the course of this video, I want to present the new version of the tool. I'll show you the bits it interfaces with. I'll talk about some of my future plans for this as an idea, and I'll let you know how you can get your hands on one. So the original version of the device was really quite simple. There was the vacuum collector head, the cyclone separator, uh, which I designed to sit on top of a, this was a jar of drinking chocolate. So that just sat on there and the two bits were connected by some PVC pipe. Dead simple, really great. Now, somebody suggested that the simplest way of getting these things manufactured would be simply to upload them to Shapeways and I looked into that and would you believe these two components the cheapest way I could potentially offer those on Shapeways I think this one was I think about just over £10 which is quite useful might be worth 10 quid. Um, but this piece was I think something like £78 to have printed commercially and you know you, you, by the time you've got a bit of shipping on that as well you're looking at the best part of a hundred quid for these two things well clearly that's a non-starter nobody's going to want to pay that so I thought is there a, a way we can produce this much more cheaply is there a sort of a commercial um, alternative to these things and the answer is yes so I'm going to get into showing you the system that I've come up with and we'll begin with looking at this thing Okay, the cyclone separator. So this is the cyclone separator that I've decided to go with. And now this is quite a commonly available. Many of you will have seen these sorts of things before. And they're sold for workshop use. And the idea is you would attach the base of the device to a container which collects all the chips or the, the, the whatever it is you're, you're vacuuming up. Your vacuum cleaner would attach to the top of the device here and then this is the inlet port so this will go down to our vacuum collecting head now this was about I think this cost me 11 or 12 pounds on Amazon um, and there's lots of variety of this type of thing available the only downside is they tend to be rather large but it has an upside in that you could connect this to all sorts of workshop equipment so for example circular saw sanding machine and what have you you could connect a domestic vacuum cleaner to the top 
and then the waste will discharge into whatever is under here, whatever you use as a container, rather than going into the, sort of the, the bag or the vacuum chamber on the vacuum cleaner itself. So I was thinking this is not a bad idea. Now certainly I'd been using my original um, device for vacuuming up flocks and things like that. If you think about situations where you're you're, you're vacuuming material away, um, and I think we've all done that little trick where you use a little bit of stocking material in the end of your vacuum cleaner pipe and you sort of then collect up that unwanted flock or static grass or whatever and you, you lifted that off of your um, the, the model you're building and then you sort of shake it all out. Well, that, that works. This works even better because we haven't got to pull all the bits out of the pair of tights or whatever you're using as your, your filter. So this is not a bad alternative, but it is quite big. Now size is is an issue, you know, particularly if you're, you're model making in a small space. But I can think of so many alternative uses for this thing. So for example, in my own workshop, I regularly work with wood and with metal and I produce all sorts of metal waste from fine dust through to chippings off the saws or, or even um, sort of larger bits of swore from the lathe and what have you. I'll be able to use this same device to clear all that mess up, discharge that mess into a, a separate container and then use exactly the same device for lifting wood dust and what have you which I can collect separately. Now certainly wood dust into a normal vacuum cleaner bag, well that's not the end of the world. Um, it does tend to fill a bag rather quickly however but sucking metal particles, particularly metal grinding dust and stuff like that is, is not ideal. So I can see many applications for this in my own sort of workshop. But I think if you give this a little bit of thought, there's an awful lot of um, very, very useful applications for this more generally. And in another video, I'll come into some of those because I've thought of a whole range of ideas that are probably quite useful for model makers using this. It does have that disadvantage that it is considerably larger than this one, but let's let's put that disadvantage to one side for a minute and think a little bit about the collector head. Now, when I designed the original collector head, I did put quite a bit of effort into this and I used the computer modeling to sort of optimize it. I don't know <laughs> I don't know how much benefit that was, but this one certainly works a treat. And like I say, I could offer this on Shapeways for about £10 and I think it works so well it would be worth paying that. However, I thought is there a, an alternative um, method? And I've come up with this. This is my laser cut version. Now this is, um, I can make this available if people are interested on a, like a fret of parts. And what I've done, I've incorporated a little valve on the front of it so we can adjust the amount of suction drawn from it. So the next thing then to consider is how we're going to connect this to the cyclone separator and again I gave some thought to it and I experimented with all sorts of different ideas of using little plumbing fittings to attach this to the PVC pipe that I'd shown you previously but it started to get to the point where I was sort of cobbling together things that I'd found in my own sort of scrap box that, that other people might not have access to so I thought is there something that's commercially available that will connect part A to part B, um, and I had a look around. I found something online which I think um, offers a great deal of utility in itself. So that's the way I've gone. So I bought a little kit of sort of miniature vacuum parts from, um, again, this was from Amazon. I think you can get the same thing in lots of different outlets. Um, and I'll leave links to these products in the video description. Now this kit of parts came with a PVC hose. It came with an adapter to connect it to a vacuum cleaner. Now you can see I've made a little crude wooden adapter that I've added to this. I'll show you that in just a minute. But the basic system comes with couple of adapters to connect to your vacuum cleaner and some really useful tools such as some brushes, some little crevice tools. Um, this brush itself is, is not bad and would be great just for vacuuming track as part of your sort of daily um, maintenance routine. Now in the in the kit of parts were a couple of useful extension pieces including this one and a cranked extension piece which had a slightly flanged end so I was able to incorporate the flanged end into the design so this thing now rotates on the end of the extension tube then we can 
join these bits together. Um, and indeed we can stick that on the end of the, the vacuum hose. So that's the basis of quite a neat little system. And for, I'll have to check the price, I think it was less than six pounds. That to me seemed like a, a reasonable idea. So the task then was to fasten this end into the cyclone separator. Now, I did some experiments initially and I simply just, just wrapped masking tape around here until it was a nice tight fit and it, it worked to treat. Um, nothing wrong with that at all. So that form of connection is fine. Um, I then went ahead and made a little wooden adapter. So that presses in there just fine. And that's the basis of our Mark II system. So it's a little bit more involved than the previous version. But this version now has the added utility that you can have this connected to your power tools that you, you might have um, that you're using with your sort of baseboard construction or whatever. Um, but also all these natty little tools, which I think could be really useful for all sorts of vacuuming jobs around a, you know, whatever model it is you're building. So let's think about the vacuum connection to our vacuum cleaner that will go onto the top of this device. So then returning to the top of the cyclone separator, and it rather reminds me of a turbocharger. In fact, you could probably, probably make a similar system out of a turbocharger if you, <laughs> if you so desired. Anyway, it's got some interesting Chinese symbols on. My Chinese is a little bit rusty. I think that says subscribe. So this is where the vacuum cleaner pipe goes. And again, I tried just wrapping masking tape around the end of the nozzle and shoving it in there. It worked a treat. I decided to go one better for the sake of the video and I've made a little wooden bung. Whatever bung you make would depend on what vacuum cleaner you use. So I've tested this out on a Dyson and a, a little pneumatic Henry uh, and both work both work fine. I've even experimented with the little slidey tool that you have on your vacuum cleaner that sort of allows more air to be sucked in, the kind of control valve, and it doesn't seem to matter where you have that set. It works just the same. So that is our basic system. Now in terms of collecting the debris through the bottom of the cyclone separator, in the demo videos which are going to follow, um, I'm using this box and the thing just bolts to the top and you'll see me lift the lid off and pull the contents away when I'm finished. But the actual vacuum collection chamber could be anything and it occurred to me that if you buy your ballast in bulk, like in one of those big buckets like the DCC Concept Supply, you could simply just make a hole in the top of the bucket and stick this on and your excess ballast would discharge directly into that bucket. As an alternative, I've got a little system here which sits on top of a tin can. So we can use an old tin can and collect our whatever it is into there. I've actually designed a little um, a little device that I can screw. I'm using, I'm using myself um, DCC Concepts uh, Legacy Ballast with a little screw top jar and I've made one of these and the, the jar just screws on. But this could be mounted on legs. I may even in my own workshop mount this sort of semi-permanently on a bracket on the wall and just have a little shelf underneath where I can just drop anything I like. So if I'm sucking up ballast or wood shavings or metal filings or what have you, I could do that via a long vacuum hose. So that's the basic system. These are the parts, which all seems rather more complex than the original version, and, and to one sense it is, but I think it's an improvement in that if you wanted to replicate this yourself, all of these parts are sort of commercially available. I'll leave Amazon links, you can buy them worldwide, and the only really specialist part is the actual vacuum collector head itself. And uh, whoops. And I'll provide some details on, on how you might be able to get your hands on one of those if you're interested. So let's see it in action. So then by way of a demo of this new system, I've got my vacuum head here. The cyclone and vacuum box is just here. We've got a length of track and I've got a jar of ballast. So what I'm gonna do is just sprinkle this ballast very crudely over the surface of the track, the length of it. And 
Now obviously if you're doing this for real, you take a little bit of time, you might even use a little ballasting machine to do a neat job. I've literally just thrown that ballast down to show you that there's no science to this, it's literally just chucked down. So what I'm going to do is turn on my vacuum cleaner now and we're going to test this gadget out. So there we go, that's three or four passes with the vacuum cleaner head. I think probably it's worth me doing maybe one or two more. So I'm going to do just that and we'll see how we get on. Okay, so before I change shot or anything, I'm going to zoom in as far as I can with this lens. What I'm going to do is, using my mobile phone, I'm going to take a photograph of the job I've just done. In fact, I'll take a couple of photographs of it. And then we'll pop those photographs up on the screen and you'll be able to see close up how well a job this machine has done. Okay, so I'm going to do this once again. This time I'm going to sprinkle the ballast on. Now hopefully the camera is showing that as being that's a pretty bad ballasting job. It's probably nearly half an inch deep, this pile, at this point where my finger is. So let's turn the vacuum cleaner on and see how well the machine does at cleaning this lot up. Okay, so I've done that very quickly um, and you can see it's removed that huge pile of ballast. As I say, that was probably half an inch or 12 millimetres deep at that point. Now the machine itself, or the vacuum head, has a, an adjustment. So we can control the level of suction by opening that little valve. But in this case, I've just used it in its raw setting. Now that's taken me many more passes backwards and forwards as would normally be the case because I've, I've vacuumed more than half of the material away. So let's try this again with maybe a slightly more realistic volume of ballast on the track. So then for this shot I've got the, the camera raised up again and I'm going to just sprinkle this ballast on. Now you would normally use maybe one of those little ballasting machines and that would certainly be a quicker way of laying this down. I'm demonstrating it in this fashion because I just want to show you just how easy it can be without neatly laid ballast. But if you had one of those little ballasting box things that you can just run along, then obviously this, this stage would be a lot quicker. But I've got less material on here than I had last time but again it's just been poured on so let's do another sweep with the vacuum attachment and we'll see how well it does. There we go, that was with two passes. And again, I'm gonna take a, a close-up photograph with my phone. And we can have a look at that on screen and see how well it's done. 
Now, by the way, of another example, I've got some legacy ballast here from DCC Concepts. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to sprinkle that on. And again, I'm just doing this really quickly, really crudely. And we'll just see how this works. Just test a different product. So, on with the vacuum cleaner and we'll try again. And once again, I'm going to take a photograph of that just so you can see how well the job is done. Now, a good question might be the shoulders at the edge of the, of the ballast. Well, if I'd use one of those little tools for running it down, then that might not be an issue. Now, of course, I could just use a rule or something and bunch that up. That looks like that's not a bad way of doing it. I could of course use the vacuum head itself. So having just sort of bunched that up, I'm going to run the vacuum head over and we'll see how that looks. There we go, not too bad a job. What I'm going to do, once again, take a photograph of that for you. And I'll put that photo that I've just taken up on the screen and you can look at it in large and we can see just how well it's done. So then you've seen those little demonstrations and you've seen how hopefully quite effectively the tool works. Um, I deliberately made the initial application of ballast in those clips very very rough and ready and I didn't edit those clips down so you saw that whole process. I think if we're talking about a little sort of 10 inch section of track then traditional methods are probably just as quick. Where I think this offers real advantage is if you want to do an awful lot of ballasting very very quickly and the fact that you don't actually have to take any care with laying the ballast down, the fact you can just literally pour it on and then bring it all nice and beautifully level with this tool, I think that's where the, uh, the benefit is. And certainly if you had a, a whole layout to do this would this would save you hours and hours of work. So there we go, that's the system as it is. That's why I've chosen the components that I have done. And I apologize that it's made this video rather long, but it seemed worth explaining everything thoroughly than maybe leaving questions still to be answered at the end of the video. So what next? Well, what I'm hoping is that if those of you who have expressed an interest in this before, if you're still interested, or maybe somebody else come along and they think they might like one of these things, let me know in the comments, and I will make a point of going through the comments, having a rough count up of who might be interested. And then I will order some of the frets to be laser cut, and I can get those turned around in a, a week or so. So maybe in a, another week or two's time, I'll post another video in which I will update on price and ordering details and things like that. I'm not a business person, so I'm not geared up for doing this sort of thing, but I do think it's a great idea. And if you're interested, I'm keen to sort of help you get this sort of thing into your, into your own hands. So I think that's it. I hope you found the video interesting. I think the additional utility that this thing offers, there's a, there's a whole world to be explored there. I've got a couple of other ideas associated with this, one of which is a downdraft table for um, doing your sanding work on and sort of getting rid of sanding dust. I have another use for this thing to aid with airbrushing also. So if this sort of takes off over the next few months, I'll, I'll show some of those other ideas as well as I refine the design ideas. But for now, we'll, we'll just focus on this thing just to keep it simple. So if you're interested, let me know. I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for watching. Cheerio.